The famous Stanford Marshmallow Experiment tests children's self-control. You have a choice. You can eat it now, totally cool, or if you can wait till I get back, I'll give you a second marshmallow. I can, I can do it. You can wait 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you want, you can use that cup to cover it up so you don't have to look at it. Good luck. Okay. Researchers showed that by putting a marshmallow in front of a kid and daring him not to eat it, you could tell if one day they'd be the next Steve Jobs or the next Steve Gutenberg. Now, in the original experiment, they just waited to see what happened, but I don't have the patience for that. All right, oh, you ate it. That's okay. I didn't eat it, I missed a cup and it was gone. How'd you do? Good. <laughs> was it good? Yeah. After I looked up the cup, it just disappeared. What disappeared? The marshmallow. Would you like another one? Oh, buddy, here. You want to eat this one? It's okay. Here, eat this one. You can eat this one. It disappeared like magic? Yeah. Well, eat this one. Tell me how it tastes. Good. Is it good? Well, we made a kid cry, so I'd say phase one was a success. So those kids had a choice, right? They could eat the one marshmallow right away, or if they were willing to wait, they would get two marshmallows. That magician played a silly little trick on them though, didn't he? We know that it can be really hard to wait for something good, especially when it seems like there's something good right in front of us. But what we think is that it's worth it. It's worth it to not eat the marshmallow right away because we know something better is coming. We call that counting the cost. And that's what we're going to be learning about today in our Bible stories is that Jesus told people who would follow him they need to count the cost and realize that following him isn't always easy. It doesn't always seem like it's the best, but that in the end, it is worth it and he is worth it. We've been asking ourselves the question, what did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Well, Jesus taught that he is all about God and his kingdom and everything in scripture points to that. And so we want to learn what it looks like to live as a part of God's kingdom. On our timeline, last week we talked about Jesus teaching the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're going to be looking at the cost of following Jesus. And we're going to see that that cost is not always easy. So we're actually going to be going through a lot in our Bible today. We're going to look at a couple of different times that Jesus taught. So I would like for you, if you have your Bible, to please turn to Luke 9, verses 23 through 24. But that is not the first verse that I'm going to read. I'm actually going to start in Matthew 8, 18 through 20. And it says, Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up to him and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So Jesus is with a crowd. We've been seeing that happens a lot. And there's a scribe, and a scribe is somebody who is, again, a big part of the church. And he comes up to Jesus and he calls him teacher. 
Now, that doesn't seem like a bad thing, does it? Jesus is a teacher. He teaches a lot. But when we read about the people who really love Jesus, they typically call him Lord and Master, meaning I believe that you are the Son of God. So when somebody like this comes up and calls him teacher, they're kind of almost a little bit making fun, like, okay, Mr. Know-it-all, like prove yourself to me. I'm not ready to call you Lord or Master yet. So this scribe comes up and he says, teacher, hey, I'll, I'll do what, I'll follow you, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And Jesus looks at him and I'm sure he's thinking, I don't think you really mean that. And he lets him know, he says, I actually, my life is not easy. Like I'm the savior, I'm the son of God, but I don't have a home. I'm away from my family. I am giving things up so I can spread the gospel, so I can spread the good news. And he's saying right there that one of the costs of following me is, is giving up things that are comfortable and easy, but it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it to follow Jesus, even if it's not always going to be easy. All right, now we're going to go to where you have, should have open in your Bible. And this is Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 24. And it says, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So do you think Jesus is telling people that if they're going to follow him, they need to die on the cross like him? That's not what he means, because he even says, take up your cross daily. But what he's saying right there is that when you follow me, you need to be prepared to let go of all the things that you want and all the things that you would desire and be willing to do whatever it takes to follow me. When we read about the disciples, both during Jesus' time, but especially in the rest of the New Testament, after Jesus has died and, and risen and gone back up to heaven, is that their lives were pretty difficult. They would have to leave their families and they had to leave their friends. A lot of them had to leave their homes. They would get arrested. They would get beat up. All of this for following Jesus. Now, it would be a whole lot easier to just keep living your life the regular way, right? If Peter had just gone back to being a fisherman and Matthew had gone back to being a tax collector. Was Matthew? Was it Andrew? One of them was a tax collector. Anyways, it would have been easier to just go back to doing life the regular way. So Jesus is saying one of the costs of following me is you have to be willing to give up things, even good things that you want to follow me. But it's worth it because everything that he has for us is even better. It may not seem like it at the time, but we know in the long run that everything that Jesus asks of us, it's always gonna end up for the best. We have to trust him for that. But the cost is not always easy. All right, we've got one more in the book of Luke, and this is Luke chapter nine, verses 25 through 28, and also verse 33. And it says, This is Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 28, and also verse 33. And it says, Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now, is Jesus saying right there that you need to hate your family? No, that's not really what he means. But what he is saying is that you have a lot of great things in your life. You've got family, you've got friends, you've got home, you've got comfort and all of this, but you cannot love anything more than you love Jesus, even the good stuff. It's easy for us to look at sin and bad things and say, oh, I love Jesus way more than that, but can we say that we love Jesus more than our mom and dad, more than our 
our friends from school and our, our cousins, more than we love living in a nice house and in a town that we like and all kinds of stuff. He says that when we come to follow him, we need to know it's not always going to be easy. We're gonna have to give some things up and we need to love him above all, but that it is worth it. It's a big cost to follow Jesus because it means giving things up, not always doing what we wanna do, but we know that it's worth it because he promises us love and joy and peace and salvation and strength and hope and so much great, good, awesome, fantastic, wonderful, amazing, indescribable things. There is a cost to following Jesus, but he is worth it. And that's what our big idea is today. Our big idea is that following Jesus is not always easy, but he is worth it. So I want to talk about what are the costs and do you think that it's worth it to follow Jesus? You know, if all Jesus cared about was being popular, he probably would have said things like, follow me and your life will be so easy all the time. Follow me and you'll get everything that you want. But instead, he shared the truth. He said, when you follow me, it's not always going to be easy, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. So on your piece of paper, in your journal, I would love for you at the top to write, count the cost. And we are going to talk about some of those costs. Now in the middle of your paper, I want you to draw a big cross. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it big enough that you'll be able to write inside of it. Now, first thing that I want to do is I want you to think about what are some of the costs of following Jesus? What are some things that you might need to give up or maybe some things that you might need to do that aren't very easy in order to follow him? Here's an idea. Write some numbers around so you can put them. How old are you? Write that many numbers. So if you're eight, write eight. If you're 10, write 10 and try and think of that many things. Now, I'm 39 and so I'm not gonna write 39 because then the, this lesson's gonna last like an hour long. But I'm gonna do five things. One, two, three, four, five. And I wanna try and think of five things that I might need to give up or uncomfortable things that I might need to do in order to follow Jesus. Well, I know number one, one of the costs might be, uh, I put no money, but it could just be less money. That when I follow Jesus, I need to know that money cannot be the most important thing to me. My whole life cannot be about getting money and getting things, okay? Another cost might be, No selfishness. I cannot be selfish if I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. He says over and over in the Bible that we need to think of others before ourselves. And so when I'm, one of the costs that I'm counting is that I am not going to be selfish as I follow him. Here's another one. This one can be tough. When I follow Jesus, I cannot be lazy, not lazy. He says that we need to work with all of our hearts. Oh, here's another one. We actually talked about this last week. Another cost of following Jesus. He says, you've got to love your enemies. Oh, I don't want to love my enemies. I want to not like my enemies. I want to make fun of my enemies. But he says, love your enemies no matter what. Whether they deserve it or not, you're supposed to love everybody. And then a final cost, and this one is tough. Woo. Love God above all. And I put a lot of lines under that because sometimes I don't think we, we think about that enough. That means that I love God more than my parents. I love him more than my friends. I love him more than my house more than my job, 
more than school. I love him more than my birthday. I love him more than getting Christmas presents. I love him more than going out to eat hot dogs. I love him more than anything, which means whatever he asks, I say yes to him and I say no to that other good stuff. So what other cost do you think you might need to give up or tough things you might need to do in order to follow Jesus? But I don't want to leave it there. We say that we need to count the cost, but also let's remember it's totally worth it. So on the inside of the cross, I want you to write what are some of the things that you get because you follow Jesus. And again, if you write five things on the outside, how about five things in the middle? So I'm going to put love. I get so much love, unlimited love, all the time love. No matter what I do, love. That's the kind of love you get when you follow Jesus. This is one of my favorites. Joy. Joy, joy, amazing joy. It's not the same as happiness, but it's this, it's this bubbling up inside of you. No matter what is going on, no matter how hard things may be on the outside, there is this joy that comes all the time. I get family. Now that might seem strange, right? Didn't I say I was, I was loving God above all? Yeah. But what's amazing is that when we follow him, we become part of his family. We are brothers and sisters with all the other believers. So instead of, of, of losing family, especially if some people get rejected by their family for following God, but instead of losing people, I actually end up gaining millions of brothers and sisters because we are all part of the family of God. Something else that I gain in him is hope. I have this amazing hope that he is going to take care of me, that everything is going to turn out amazing and for his glory. And then another one, and I, I mentioned this earlier, I love this one too, is I get peace. I have this, this calmness and this promise in my heart that he's going to be with me and love me all the time. I could fill this cross up with so many words of the amazing things that come when we follow Jesus. And even though things out here can seem scary and hard and yeah, it's not always easy, everything that we would put inside this cross show that it is totally worth it to follow Jesus no matter what. Let's go ahead and pray. Jesus, we know that following you is not always going to be easy. We know that following you means giving up things that we like, things that we love. We know that following you might mean that we get made fun of, that we don't have everything else that people around us have. But thank you, Jesus, that it's worth it. Thank you that the life that we have in you is worth the cost that we pay to follow you. I want to pray for everybody listening to this message right now. Help us, Jesus, to love you above all and to follow you no matter what. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.